Welcome into Texans today, everybody. I'm your host, Jeremy Chuggs, and coming up on today's program, the top five position battles for your Houston Texans heading into you know the end of OTAs, and then we have training camp, then preseason, and then the regular season. Ah, football is so back. Football is so back. But before we get into all of that, before we talk about the top five position battles for the Houston Texans this offseason, I have a quick thing that I need each and every single one of you to go down and do for me right now. Go down, first off, hit that subscribe button, then go down and click the notification bell. Out of all my subscribers, I'm actually one of the worst channels here at Chat Sports when it comes to people who have their notifications turned on. Only about 14% of you have that on. So let's change that. Go down and click the notification bell. Select the all option if you want to be notified every time we drop a video. If there's Texans breaking news, we're going to break bring you a video if there's anything you need to know we're gonna get you covered with the video that's why you gotta not only subscribe but also hit that notification bell and if you already do have your notice turned on go down and spam the bell icon so I can show you a little bit of love I appreciate every single one of you who hit that subscribe button and then go and hit that noti bell join the noti gang today have your notifications turned on so we can keep you updated with every single time we bring you a video so Top five position battles coming up. First up, the wide receiver five position. Now, the first three wide receivers are a lock. You have Tank Dell, you have Stephon Diggs, and Nico Collins. And then four, I believe it's going to be Noah Brown. But looking at that wide receiver five position, that's where it gets a little bit mixed up. Is it going to be Robert Woods? Is it going to be John Mechie? Is it going to be Ben Skoranek? Xavier Hutchinson? I mean, who is it going to be? I'm not sure. I know a lot of y'all are probably leaning towards the former second round pick out of Alabama in one John Mechie. He is a lot of people's favorite to get that wide receiver five battle. He's been working a lot, out a lot with CJ Stroud, been kind of working on his game. Remember, he was technically a rookie last year because he sat out all of 2022 battling that um, Hodgkin's lymphoma, which he overcame. A lot of people think he's going to be wide receiver five, but... The Texans have made a couple moves this offseason, one of them being trading for Ben Skoranek, the former Rams wide receiver, kind of gadget type player. He does a lot on special teams. A guy who you keep him on the back end of your wide receiver depth chart, he can do a lot of things on your roster for you. So I think he finds his way either as a maybe wide receiver five or wide receiver six. I don't know exactly how they're going to use Skoranek, but he's in position to you know fight for that wide receiver five battle as well and get snaps there as well. And then a lot of people have written this guy off, but could it be Robert Woods? We saw that highlight during OTAs, the no-look throw to Robert Woods. He's still a decent receiver. I mean, last year, 40 receptions, 426 yards, and a touchdown. Not anything crazy, but out of a wide receiver five, he's still somebody that you can trust on your team. And then Xavier Hutchinson, the rookie last year out of Iowa State, eight receptions, 90 yards for him. He's a little bit of a fan favorite as well, working on his special teams so that he can make an impact in multiple facets of the game. But I don't know if he ends up making the roster either. I think a lot of y'all, I was going to ask, who do you think is going to be wide receiver five here? But I think most people would say John Mechie. So I'm going to ask you this question instead. If Mechie is the wide receiver five, what's your confidence level in him going into next season? Is it one, you have no confidence whatsoever, or a hundred, you are over the moon. You think he's going to be the best Wide receiver five in the NFL. What I don't know what that is saying. Best wide receiver five in the NFL. You think he's going to be a really good wide receiver for the Texans next year? That's 100. Let me know down in the comment section your confidence level in Mechie going into next season. Next up, running back two. We know Joe Mixon. He's going to be the bell cow. He's going to be your RB1. But who gets the totes behind Mixon? Who's the guy who they kind of put in for a breather? Now, it's been back and forth for me, but D'Amico Ryans has been very high on Damian Pierce this offseason. He said, you know, he's coming looking better. He's a more complete back than he was last year, and he wants it to be a one-two punch with Joe Mixon and Damian Pierce. So is that said and done? Is it going to be Damian Pierce as your RB2? Like, I know he had a down year last year. Well, only 416 yards. The yards per carry was not pretty for Damian Pierce last year, but his rookie season, he played well. So maybe 
having a little less attention on him, being able to come in on short yardage downs and really give a little bit of extra burst could fare well for Damian Pierce. Also, they drafted Jawar Jordan in the sixth round this year, and a lot of people say he is a little bit of a spark plug, maybe a diamond in the rough the Texans found in the late end of the draft last year at Louisville. 181 carries, over 1,100 yards, and 13 touchdowns. Nothing to be shy about. Jawar Jordan was good last year. Could he maybe push Damian Pierce for a couple of those RB2 snaps? I really wonder if he'll be able to, you know, find his way on the field at all on offense. Now, next up, we're looking at free safety. You know, I we have two guys who started last year who are back this year who might very well be the starters at the two safety spots. I think they might run a lot of three safety sets. But whenever it comes to who's on the back end for this Texans defense, I wonder who they're going to give that. Is it going to be Kalen Bullock, the rookie out of USC? I mean, he his strengths are, you know, playing on the back end, being that kind of free safety center fielder role. So is he going to be the one that starts in those sets? Or I even wonder when they only have two safeties on the field, if they're in their base packages, who starts at the other safety spot? Is it going to be, you know, Jimmy Ward or Jay and Jalen Petrie together? Or is it going to be Jimmy Ward and Kalen Bullock? Is it going to be Jalen Petrie and Kalen Bullock? What two safeties are going to be out there whenever they're in their base packages? I'm really interested to see what they do in those instances because Jimmy Ward, Jalen Petrie did not play good last year. They obviously felt like they needed to add somebody. They drafted somebody pretty high up in the third round. They actually traded up for Kalen Bullock to go up and select him. So do they start him in base packages and maybe rotate in Jalen Petrie and Jimmy Ward in nickel uh, packages? That is something to be watching out for during training camp, during OTAs going into this season. Now, coming up, I have two more position battles you need to look out for during this Texans offseason, but if you didn't get them already, I have some dope H-Town gear for you. Just dropped the brand new Texans logo, the secondary logo. I mean, these are so sweet. You can go get them right now when you go to chatsports.com slash H-Town. That link is going to be in the comment section and description of today's video. They have hoodies. They have sweaters. They have long sleeves. They have t-shirts all with the brand new H-Town logo. Absolutely fresh. Go get it today before the season starts. Maybe have a little summer apparel with the t-shirt right here. Go get it right now at chatsports.com slash H-Town. Great deals on all of the Texans gear you need. Maybe do a little window shopping over with our friends over at Fanatics. Go check it out today. Next battle we're looking at. Left guard and center. I kind of cheated a little bit. I switched these two kind of, I smushed them together because I think the left guard and the center are go hand in hand whenever you're talking about the position battles because I think whoever wins the left guard battle really will decide who wins the center battle because I've said before, maybe they roll with this. Maybe they go with Juice Scruggs at left guard, Jarrett Patterson at center. That would change one thing. But if the reports are true that we're hearing, from D'Amico Ryans, from, you know, OTAs, from within the Texans organization. A lot of people are saying Kenyon Green is going to go ahead and start there at left guard. And with that, I think Juice Scruggs ends up being the center right there. I mean, Kenyon Green apparently looks really good coming off a shoulder injury from last year. Could he be slotted in there at left guard? And then, of course, they drafted a right tackle in round two. Do they want to have him be the right tackle to start off and maybe – I know the very unpopular opinion of moving Titus Howard into guard. I know a lot of y'all think he's a tackle only, but he's, they keep on moving him to guard. They keep on trying him out at guard. So if they really want Blake Fisher out of there on the field, could they in turn maybe bump Howard in? I don't know. I think it all you know depends on what happens with Kenyon Green. A former first-round pick out of Texas A&M, struggled his rookie season, obviously got injured in the last preseason game, Last year, does he have what it takes? He looks a lot slimmer. He looks a lot better going into this offseason. Also, change of numbers. So maybe Kenyon Green, this was all, you know, a little bit what he needed. He needed some time off to kind of reflect, get his body right, and get ready to start for this Texans team. But we've asked you before, <coughs> who do you think starts at center? If it's Kenyon Green at left guard, then one of these guys are starting at center. Juice Scruggs or Jarrett Patterson. Honestly, I thought Patterson looked really good last year in his short stint at center. But what say you? Do you think it's Scruggs? Go ahead and type JS. Or do you think it's Jarrett Patterson? Type JP. Let me know what you think down in the comment section 
Who do you think will play center for the Texans going into next season? Before I give you my last position battle, here are the honorable mentions of position battles that I would want to watch as well. Tied in two between Brevin Jordan and Cade Stover. That could be a good competition. Linebacker, I think it's Henry Toto's job to lose, but they brought in a couple free agents. They drafted Jamal Hill, which I don't really know how he fits. I think he's more of a special teamer, but maybe he pushes for a spot. And then defensive tackle, I think it's going to be Danico Autry, Foley, Fotokasi, but maybe they bring somebody in. Maybe somebody like a, you know, Davis or Settle kind of push one of these guys a little bit. I think that's kind of set in stone. That's why I didn't have it in my top five, but look out for the defensive tackle battle this offseason. Now, lastly, the top position battle you should be watching, it's cornerback two. It's who's going to be starting opposite of Derek Stingley because we know we have our cornerback one, one. We have our lockdown guy in Stingley, but who's going to be lining up opposite of him going up against the second best wide receivers on opposing teams? Right now, I think it might be Jeff Okuda, but I mean, Maybe early reaction, bad reaction. OTAs, he's had some questionable plays. And then not even looking at OTAs because that's basically glorified seven on seven. That's not real football. Jeff Okuda has not played well his past couple seasons in the National Football League. Do we just think that he's going to go ahead and turn it around and be a great corner for us? I'm not ready to, you know, bank this season, bank this Texans defense on Jeff Okuda starting on the outside. I think he has a lot of talent. I think he has a lot that he can prove, but... Do you feel comfortable with him starting outside? And then you have the Texans' second-round pick in Kamari Lasseter, the kid out of Georgia. Do we feel comfortable with him starting on the outside opposite of Derek Stinley? We know it's a really hard to acclimate from college football into the pros. Corners usually have a little bit of a struggle period in that first year. We've seen guys, you know, obviously do well in their first year, like Sauce Gardner. But could Kamari Lasseter have, you know, some growing pains at starting outside cornerback that's going to be what I'm looking at. There's a lot, some free agent options as well, some trade you know, rumors around some cornerbacks to look into. But I'm going to be really looking at the development of Kamari Lasser and seeing what Jeff Okuda, C.J. Henderson can bring to the table to see who's starting opposite of Derek Stingley. That's all I have for you today, folks. If you want to go follow me on Twitter, do it at Jeremy Chugs, giving you the latest Texans news and rumors, NFL news and rumors, the dankest memes on the internet. And don't forget to go down and hit that sub button for daily Texans videos all year long. We are the number one Texans channel on YouTube. So hit that sub button and join the nation.